everybody, this is Maxwell Edge for Life is a Video Game the Movie, and my guest today again is Tom Campbell, a NASA physicist, consciousness researcher, and author. And today we're going to be asking him some very basic questions about his theory to give everyone the bare bones introductory they need in order to uh, understand what we're talking about. Tom, thank you again for joining me. Well, you're welcome, Maxwell. It's always fun to do an interview with uh, you and Elliot. Oh, I'm so glad you think so. We, we love talking about this to no end. <laughs> um, okay, so the first question I'm going to ask you is, uh, before we get into what the theory is all about, what are the two major assumptions involved in your theory that we need to understand moving forward? Okay. Um, well, there are just two, and one of them can be summarized as consciousness exists, okay? So we, we can't derive the origin of the larger consciousness system. So we, we kind of give that up. We know that's outside of our, of our uh, ability to see because we are consciousness. And if you are consciousness, then it's impossible to get outside of the consciousness system so you can look back at it and describe it from, you know, an objective point of view. Right. So getting outside of consciousness is just not going to happen because we are consciousness. You know, in uh, the books and in one of my, uh, I think it was the first London lecture, I go into a long uh, metaphor about the intestinal bacteria. Right. And that even if your intestinal bacteria are brilliant and have all the information they can gather from inside, you know, the intestines, they still don't know anything about the outside world. You know, their job is to work on food, decompose it, process it. And they probably know a lot about food, <laughs> but they don't know much about where it comes from. They don't know about, you know, fields and grains and tractors and, and trains and, you know, all the refrigerators, sun, su you know, sunshine, rain, soil, all that sort of stuff is outside of their potential knowing. They just can't get out and experience sunshine and rain because they just live in the intestine. So that's sort of the, you know, that's, that's, that's a metaphor. It's an imperfect metaphor as most metaphors are, but it gives you the idea that it's not because we just aren't smart enough. It's because we just don't know. You have to realize that there are limits to your knowledge. So that we start with an assumption that consciousness exists. Now, that's not really a big leap of an assumption for most of us. You know, I mean, we experience consciousness, right? Sure. So the fact that it exists is not really a big stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. That's pretty solid. That's a pretty solid thing. But we don't, we don't assume any, any uh, particular um, you know, abilities of it at this point. Now, we do assume some properties with its existence, and that is consciousness is information, Okay, awareness is information. Aware of what? Well, as soon as you're describing what, that's information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You see, so to, so to be aware, it's an information system. Right. So that's just the fundamentals of what does it mean to be conscious? It means, you know, awareness, and awareness means information. It means perception. It means, you know, data. That's what perception is. Perception is, is uh, you know, you get information and then you interpret the information. So we realize that, that just by our understanding of what consciousness is, that it has to be an information system. And from there, we can spread out a little bit and say, well, we also realize that information is non-physical. Now, I may be jumping ahead a little bit, but it all kind of goes together. Right. Here. So we look at it immediately and we say, because information is, in is non-physical, and the reason we say that is how much does information weigh? <laughs> how much volume does information take right. up? Right, what units say, of information can we measure? Yeah, exactly. How, mu how do you measure information? You say, well, we consider a book. A book now has weight, it has mass, it takes up space, but a book is not information. Right. A book is paper and ink. Okay, now paper is physical, ink is physical, both of those have weight, take up space. But that's not the information. The information is the content, the message, the meaning, and that requires a consciousness, you see. You can show the book to your refrigerator, 
<laughs> but the refrigerator doesn't get the information, the content, the meaning, because your refrigerator isn't conscious. You see? Right. The book is just so, a big paperweight unless something is processing the data in it. Right. It doesn't, it, it's not really information. Now, you can store information in a book, right? You can transmit information, you know, by physical means, but the information itself is non-physical, has no volume, has no mass, uh, and it can only be understood and, you know, transmitted, if you will. It can only be encoded by a consciousness. If there was nothing consciousness, there would be no information in books, even if somehow, you know, paper flew together and uh, stuck in a form that looked like a book, and if ink splattered all over the book, it wouldn't be information because without the consciousness, there's no structure. You see, it's all random, and you haven't reduced the entropy enough to create information. If we think of information uh, as far as bits, then when you have random bits, there's no information. Right. When your bits become structured, you get information. So you see, information has to do with structure. With ordering, well, there's another thing that has to do with ordering and structure, and that's called entropy. Entropy is a measure of order. Okay, so if you have disorder, you've got a lot of random bits, then you have very high entropy. You start taking those bits and putting them into some kind of structure or order, you've created information now. Your structure and order is information itself. For instance, um, if we make a structure like up, down, up, down, up, down, what's the next element? It's going to be up, right? Because we've got a pattern going. That's information. See, the pattern has the information in it. So structure provides information, right? So we've backed, we've backed a little far away from where I'm going. But So here we have consciousness, and we've just realized that consciousness is an information system. Information is not physical. Consciousness is a non-physical information system. It's just information. It's not a media it's not, does, you know, how does consciousness store the information? Consciousness is an information field. Okay. And we've, we see that um, then we've de kind of described some properties of consciousness. It's an information system and it's non-physical. Right. So that kind of gives our first assumption and a little bit of logic that's kind of obvious just from the nature of what consciousness is and the obvious of what information is. Uh, that gives us a little bit of our first assumption that consciousness exists. And we start with a very simple thing. We don't say consciousness exists and it sure is smart and it's got a lot of information. We say consciousness exists. The potential for a consciousness system to just have, you know, two bits, a one and a zero, that's that's all we have to start with. It has, we have this information system. It's non-physical. It has the potential to differentiate this from that, one from zero. Right. It, it's a big. It's that's, a big, complicated question, but uh, you put it very succinctly and simply. I think everyone can follow and yeah. kind of agree with that. Is what consciousness is. So consciousness now. Well. We can also think that that's what our consciousness is because look what happens if we take away our information. Information we gather through the senses. Take away all the information you gather through your senses and what do you got? Well, you don't see anything, you don't hear anything, you don't feel anything, you don't smell anything, you can't taste anything. <laughs> what do you have? You have nothing. Mm -hmm. You see, you don't have a reality. All you have is awareness, consciousness. You've taken away all the information that defines the physical world. So you don't have any information about the physical world. Therefore, you don't have a physical world. Your physical world has disappeared. So, see, that's our reality. We live in this physical reality, in this physical world. It's just information is what makes it. And we'll, we can go into that a little further later for the basis of this. Okay, so now we've kind of said what the first assumption is consciousness exists. It's some kind of a potential energy form that's non-physical, and it has the ability to distinguish this state from that state. It's it just can that. say, well, I feel this way, and then I feel that way. So there's mm -hmm, two mm -hmm. ways that I can feel. That's a one and a zero. 
And if it can do a one and a zero, then it can say something like, well, I can feel this way, then that way, then this way, then that way, then that way, then this way. And now we've got a string of ones and zeros, you see. So you don't need a lot of and, different kinds of information to begin to build up right. more complicated You don't system. need a, a lot to start with. All you need is this, uh, this awareness of a this and a that state. And if you can do a this and a that, you can do lots of thises and thats. And if you have lots of thises and thats, then you've got lots of ones and zeros. And hey, you know, that's what makes up computers, right? Next right? thing you know, you've got a pretty complicated program. Yeah, you've got memory. If you've got lots of this and that, you've got patterns, you've got structure. What have you done? You've lowered your entropy. You've taken nothing and you've built some structure okay, within this system. So what does consciousness do? Consciousness then evolves and it evolves toward lower entropy states, which means more structure, more information because it's an information system. And what it does is, you know, like to structure information. And what if it didn't evolve? Well, if it could de-evolve, it right. could just lose that information, and then all it would be left with is no structure and a bunch of random ones and zeros that didn't really mean anything. You say, well, now it's got high entropy and can't do anything. It's just this potential again, but it's not. The potential is not uh, actualized. So by structure, by reducing its entropy, it actualizes its potential to differentiate between states and creates information. It evolves by lowering its entropy and creating structure. It dissolves, becomes nothing, dies, if you will, disappears if it becomes just random. No more information. Just like this physical world disappears when all your senses are gone and there's no more information. Right. So... You see, this is where we start, a very simple system. And then comes our second assumption, which is evolution exists. Evolution is a process. It's just a general process. Now, everybody's heard of this process applied to our physical reality, physical evolution. But that's just one application. Right. Evolution is a very general process. It says if you have a system that's capable of changing itself... And if that system has some sort of goal, like reducing its entropy, then that system will change in order to better itself. It'll change in order to reduce its entropy in this case. Right. And if it doesn't, or in the physical it system, exist. yeah, if it doesn't, it doesn't exist, so it goes right. away. You see, so only those systems who wish to survive, if you will, wish, wish to become, wish to grow, those systems then start lowering their entropy. Those other systems that really don't give a damn about growing <laughs> or becoming or whatever, well, then they just dissolve away and become random bits again. They're just an, a potential to grow, right. you see? So here we have a consciousness system, and uh, it uh, can do these things, you know, differentiate between ones and zeros, builds up a little structure, and it says, hey, that's neat. Look, I can play tic-tac-toe, you right. know. I can do other things. I can do these simple little things, and, and uh, that's fun for me. It gives me something to right. do. You know, I can build with tinker toys. Yeah, and I can right? snowball that's what infants, figure things. And, right, that's what infants do, right. right? They play with stuff. They build up, you know, they take ABC blocks, and they build up things. The basics. And they make structure. They scribble with crayons, you know. They do things which provides structure. And this does that too. And the more structure it has, then the more awareness it has because it has awareness of its own information. Right, more to reflect See, on. So, exactly. Its awareness grows. Its understanding grows of what it's doing and it's doing it on purpose. Just think of a baby, right? right? The same thing. You know, babies learn structure just by trial and error. They do stuff and it causes things to happen. So then they do that again, and if the same thing happens, then they start to believe that that'll always happen when they do it, and it becomes part of their reality. You and see? then they become shockingly so, disappointed the first time it doesn't happen like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So that's how realities start, just from this, these two assumptions. Consciousness exists, and evolution exists as a process. So, and that... Sometimes people call uh, evolution, uh, recently, in the last decade or so, evolution has been called emergent complexity. Uh, 
that's just a five dollar you know word for or two words for evolution right complexity will merge out of nothing if it has the potential <laughs> to do so you see so if it's got all the right ingredients and it's got the potential and a and an information system that can distinguish one state from another has that potential, then it will evolve. It will find systems if it has a purpose. If it has no purpose, then it just dithers around randomly and comes and goes. But if it gets a purpose, which is lower your entropy, grow, then evolution starts taking hold of that system. And what happens is the system does all kinds of things just to amuse itself, right? Now, I say that in kind of tongue-in-cheek. It's not an intelligent system. It doesn't have a, you know, a nervous system yet. It's not really thinking. It's just trying stuff, doodling, doing things randomly. Right. But it gets a sense of what it, it knows what it's doing. It can keep track of it. After all, it's got ones and zeros. It's got memory. Right. It, it knows how it's structuring things. And not that it knows it intellectually again, just that it's done it. It is that. It's just done this. It is that, right. So it knows it in that sense. You know, you don't have to have a, uh, you know, a brain to think about these things intellectually. You're just working at them at an, mm. at an experiential. You're an experimentalist. Right. Let's try this. Let's try that. You see, it's that sort of thing. And as you try things, and those things actually lower your entropy and you say oh look at all that structure well then you try more and try it again and that's how evolution works so you start the system starts moving toward its goal that's the way emergent complexity works and they you say you start with chaos which is all the random ones and zeros and eventually a complex ordered system will begin to evolve if it has a you know, any sense of its own self, of its own existence, if you will. will. So now that's, yeah, so that's part of this assumption. The system, this consciousness exists, and it has some very rudimentary self-awareness. Right. So, so now so think, think a minute of all the things we've brought into the, the problem with this assumption. And that is, if it can tell state A from state B and then change A to B and B to A, guess what it also has? Time. It's got before right. and after, right? So it's got some kind of rudimentary time rides in with this assumption. Time is there. Now, it's not an ordered time. It's not a metronome ticking out a regular beat yet. It's just, you know, oh, I, you know, I'm now in state B. I was in state A. Well, that <laughs> defines some kind of primordial time, if you will, and as mm. it evolves mm. and gets cleverer and gets more complex with evolution, it can invent regular time as a technology. It can say, right, as yeah, a standard, I as can, a ruler. Yes, I can, uh, I can change these two states back and forth regularly. You know, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Well, if I can just do that regularly and I can build up some structure to define regular, then uh, you've got regular time, you know, what we call time. You've got a metronome. You've got things, you've got, yeah, you've got ticking and talking. But now that's a, that's a technology that it's created way on downstream after a lot of evolution has gone by. Okay. Now, you see, we're making a parallel here with our physical evolution because evolution's evolution. It all works the same way. You take, you start with a potential and that potential just tries stuff kind of randomly, and the stuff that works goes on and tries more stuff. The stuff that doesn't yes. work, you know, it tries stuff and that doesn't work out, then it just disappears. So eventually, a couple right. of billion years later, you look and say, wow, look at that. Man, that evolution's really smart. Well, it looks really <laughs> smart, but it isn't as smart as it looks. It just takes what works. What works continues on ev evolving, and what doesn't work goes away. So eventually, you don't see the 100 million things that went away. You only see the thing that worked. And you say, wow, look what <laughs> evolution did. Man. You how see? Yeah, how impressive. Look at this very <laughs> complex structure. Well, that's how, you know, that's how it works. Well, with our physical evolution, work the same way. So we start with a potential 
right, for life. What's that? A couple of amino acids, you know, some carbon and oxygen and this and that, and maybe a little electric uh, discharge here and there to jazz them up, and you have a cell. Well, we do this in the lab. Biologists can put these chemicals together and zap them or shake them or do what they do, and they do sometimes form what we'd call the, you know, the building blocks of living cells. So you get a cell. Well, it's then. It's just more random stuff. So you had all this stuff there, and then it just one day happened to be the right place, the right time, just randomly tried the right configuration, and zowie, this one works, okay? They have a little, they have right. a little cell, which is kind of a little processing unit, if you want. It does stuff, mm. you know? It takes in things, excretes things. It has, you know, it's a, it's a little subset of processing. A little, it's a good Yeah, it's a little block. building block. So what does it do? Well, it hangs around for millions of years, just, you know, being, just trying and doing different things until it just happens to one day need a friend. So it splits in two and starts talking with itself. <laughs> of course, I'm making jokes. It's not intellectual. It just happened. And when it happened, it was another, oh, wow, isn't this neat? Look, now we can have somebody to talk to. Now there's, now there's two. two of us. Oh, let's do it again. You see? Because yeah. that worked. <laughs> now that's part of our memory. We can do it again. So that's how evolution works in the same way. It's, it starts with a potential. Eventually, through random activity, you start with chaos. Through this random activity, some things come together. Those things then build on themselves because that's what evolution does. And the ones that build on themselves badly just disappear and you don't know about them. So anyway, that's what consciousness did. It was this very crude... Um, capability, or I should say potential. We can call it a potential energy just because we like the word energy and, you know, that, that makes us feel right. good if we call it that. <laughs> but call it, you know, these are all metaphors now. You know, potential energy is a metaphor. It just is. It's this thing that does information. And that's all it does. Right, it's, it's just basic, information. Uh, it's and you say, well, what's it made of? Unit. What is it, you know, what are its ones and zeros? Are they rocks or stones or, you know, Twigs? Or, no, 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 no. That's because you're, you're, you know, you've got this idea of everything has to be physical. This is just information. Right. It's a system that can tell a one from a zero because the way it feels. There's not, there's no objects. There's nothing physical involved here. Just an information system. Okay, we don't know exactly right. how that works because we're physical and we want every everything has to be a physical thing for us. That's the way we think. Well, this inform right, we'll yeah, this, this information thing isn't physical. like that. It's just information. There's no media, and there's no right. code symbols. It's just information. So that's what we are saying it's is primordial. consciousness. That's our definition. And then we have this, this uh, process that's called evolution. And evolution is just a process. And the process feeds on itself. What you know, the process gets inputs, the process works, its process gets outputs, those outputs then become inputs to the same process. Evolution continually works on itself, so it's it, uh, its output feeds itself as input, that's how it keeps changing and growing. So, that's it, those are the only two assumptions. From that, we can derive everything else, including better physics, you know, and better metaphysics and better philosophy. And, uh, you know, a general better understanding of the world. Now, none of that would be particularly interesting, except when we derive this better understanding of the world, a very strange thing happens. The world actually works like that. You see, huh. that's the strange thing. We can derive a better physics and we can answer more of the unanswered questions of physics than the, you know, than the uh, traditional physicists can. We can... Yeah, yeah we can tell exciting. them, why is it that that double slit experiment works that way? Why is it that sometimes this energy is a particle and sometimes a wave? We can tell them, you know, right. a lot of things. We can tell them, what about this synchronicity that so many people experience? Why does that happen? We can explain mm -hmm. that. We can explain the results that uh, Princeton Engineering Anomalies Research, Pair Labs does, you know, immaculate protocols. We can explain that. 
the physicists at, Pro, at Paralabs can't explain it. They just know it happens, you see. So we get a better physics. We can explain quantum mechanics. We can explain relativity. We can explain why the speed of light seems to be a constant, you know, invariant under the motion of its source, is the way it's said. Uh, we can explain all that, and um, we can do better physics than, than uh, traditional physics can. And suddenly, all the things that, that uh, Buddha was talking about, and, uh, you know, Krishna were talking about, and all of, the, all of this old philosophy... Uh, it's not just Eastern Gnostics as well that they were talking about, sure. you know. And you get down into the, into the fundamentals of most religious philosophies, and that's what they're talking about too, in to some extent. All of that stuff, rather than just being uh, beliefs and, and uh, creeds and that sort of thing, actually becomes logical. It makes sense. All of it get der- right. gets derived. So that's why... Um, these two assumptions are real significant and neither one of them is a big stretch. We know evolution is a working process. We can see it, you know, science has, has, has uh, you know, studied it now for, you know, 150 years and we ought to know that consciousness exists because here we are, you know, consciousness right. talking to each other. So that's not a real, so we take two all very obvious things as our assumptions and, uh, we derive everything else. We derive reality. We derive this physical reality. And we not only know how this physical reality works, but we understand its structure so good we, our physics is better. We can tell the physicists how to solve their, you know, their, their problems. Uh, we understand uh, the paranormal. Well, the paranormal isn't para anymore. Para means beyond, you know, above. <laughs> It's, uh, you know, it's not normal, it's above normal, it's beyond normal. Well, it's just normal because this explains right. that sort of thing of how these things happen, why they happen, what the point is, what are the restrictions, why do they not happen all the time, why are they so irregular and so hard to, to deal with and measure and reproduce, and all of that comes out as logical consequence of these two assumptions. So that's why these assumptions and this this talk about uh, reality being, you know, an, a um, simulation, an information system, that's why it's so interesting and important is because it really works. And it'll also tell you why it is that you're unhappy and, and miserable and your life isn't going well <laughs> if indeed you are unhappy, miserable, and your life isn't going well. It'll explain why that is. And what you need to do to change that. So, yes, it explains everything. The subjective as well as the objective. Because once you understand what your purpose is, then you realize that you're not feeling like your life is working well. is because you're not working toward that purpose. And when you're not working toward that purpose, well, you're working against the system. You work against the system, life sucks. It doesn't work out for you. You know, things aren't good. You are constantly getting in your own way, working at cross purposes to yourself, to what you're doing. So it explains a lot, not only science. Well, who cares about that? Eggheads go do science and then they yeah, tell us right. what it means and we really don't <laughs> believe them anyway. You know, it really, oh, philosophy, all right, Buddha, you know, Krishna, you know, go on and on through all of that, you know. Uh, yeah, 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 that's just all hocus pocus too. And so on, but it also tells you about you, your psychology, mm-hmm. um, you know, who and what you are, why you are, what you're doing, what you should be doing. How is it that you can be part of the, of the, um, you know, the solution to what's wrong in the world? What are the steps? Where's the solutions? So it answers all of those questions. That's why it's interesting. That's that's why you Absolutely. ought to support Absolutely. this video, right? Because that's why it's interesting. It gives you all those things, and it doesn't give it to you as, trust me, believe me, it's this way, like you get out of philosophy, like you get out of Buddhism, like you get out of uh, you know, Eastern and Western philosophy and religion. It starts with those two, those two assumptions and derives all of that logically. It's science. So it says, 
this is what your purpose is. This is why you don't feel very happy and, and uh, miserable. This is what's wrong with your relationship. This is why you and your girlfriend or boyfriend aren't getting along, you know, right down into the daily stuff. It explains what's going on. And I know people are thinking, that's impossible. That's personal stuff. Yeah, well, that's subjective. It explains the subjective, how things work, how the interactions work. So that's the reason for taking an interest in this is it'll change your life. It will uh, give you some, some, you know, something to grab hold of, some logical structure that will make sense out of your experience. Whether that experience contains anything paranormal or not doesn't make any difference. It'll give you structure, logical structure, that'll help you make sense out of your experience, whatever that experience is. So, have we done the two assumptions? I think we've, uh, we've wrapped them up pretty well and probably run across a few of your other questions, but let's... Just yeah. a bit, just a so bit. So, let's go on. Fine. 